flakes, flurries, squalls, blizzard. Winter is coming, and the ABC 57 First Warning Neighborhood Weather Team wants to get you prepared. Our team of meteorologists will teach you about the science of winter weather, plus how you can stay warm and safe when Mother Nature throws the worst at us. This is ABC 57's Project Blizzard. Lake effect snow is a weather phenomenon that is unique to the Great Lakes region. It forms when the cold air passes over the warm water. Well, when that warm air rises, it causes some of that water to evaporate. The water vapor then cools as it moves further away from the lake. It then begins dropping snow further inland and sometimes quite a bit of snow. Now, where the snow bands develop depends directly on the directions of the wind. Here in Michiana, we typically see lake effect snow when winds are out of the north, northwest, and west. Since lake effect snow can vary in intensity and placement, snow totals can have a wide range from city to city. Precipitation comes in many different forms, especially during the winter months. There can be rain, freezing rain, sleet, and snow. It all depends on the temperature of the atmosphere between the clouds and the ground. Most of the time in the winter, the air between the clouds and the ground is below freezing, meaning it's 32 degrees or colder. And precipitation will fall as snow. However, when a warm layer of air slices between the clouds and the ground, we can have rain, freezing rain, or sleet. If the warm air is only a thin layer, snowflakes will fall through that warm layer, melt into rain, and then they re-enter the freezing air above the ground. When this happens, we get sleet. If there's a thick layer of warm air, snowflakes fall into that layer and melt into rain. When they re-enter the freezing air, there's not enough cold air beneath that to freeze again, so it falls onto the ground as freezing rain. If the warm layer of air extends all the way to the ground, precipitation will fall as rain. Two different types of pressure systems that we have when talking about the weather. When a meteorologist talks about high pressure, it's usually indicated by a blue H here. We usually have sunny skies as well as slightly cooler temperatures. But with a low pressure system here with the red L, that usually means that stormy or unstable weather is coming. And we have two fronts associated with the low as well, the red warm front and the blue cold front. Now in the winter time, we usually have snow showers out ahead of the warm front and rain behind it. And the temperatures actually rise as the warm front moves through an area. But in the summertime, we can find all rain along the warm front. Now with the cold front, as it moves on through, temperatures tend to decrease as it slides through an area, as well as the winds, they can be uh, increased as well as it carries on in. But stormy weather as well as rain showers are found out ahead of it. But behind the cold front in the wintertime, that's where we can find snow showers as well as near the center of the low. You may have heard every snowflake is different, and that's true. But they all start the same, and they're more than just frozen water. In the cloud, a snowflake will start as a tiny water droplet. It's super cooled below freezing. But it needs something to freeze to. That could be a speck of dust or even a piece of pollen. That will freeze instantly, and an ice crystal is formed. Ice crystals are the foundation of the snowflake. It's what the snowflake builds upon as water vapor freezes directly to the crystal. That snowflake will grow. Now, every crystal is unique, so every snowflake is unique. But thanks to the shape of the crystal, all snowflakes have six sides. There are five basic types of snowflakes. Dendrites, or the classic snowflake we're probably most familiar with. But there are also plates and needles, prisms, and columns. They all have six sides. Now the last three, needles, prisms, and columns, may not look like it, but they have six sides. They're just like plates, but they're more three-dimensional or elongated snowflakes. Depending on the temperature, different types of snowflakes will fall. The next time it's snowing, go outside, get a dark glove or mitten, and try and catch those snowflakes and see what shape they are. Blizzard warnings are unique because you don't actually have to have much snow falling. Strong winds and blowing snow cause that low visibility, creating whiteout conditions that define a blizzard. When issued, it shows up in orange. Now with a winter storm warning in Michiana, typically means that we're going to see about six inches or more of snow within a day. 
Typically, we see with it the blowing and drifting snow occurs as well, and it shows up in pink on the weather maps. Now, ice storms are rare, but when they occur, they can be very costly. More than a quarter inch of ice can bring down power lines and tree limbs and turn roads into an ice rink. This warning is purple. When light snow, blowing and or drifting snow or even light freezing rain is expected, a winter weather advisory will be issued. When you see this light purple advisory, you should use caution on the roadways and know that school delays will be possible. The blizzard of 1978 was one of the most powerful winter storms to ever hit the United States. The storm began on the night of January 25th, rapidly growing, and dropped heavy snow over Illinois, Indiana, and Michigan. You can see some of the pictures here. Snowfall rates were almost one to even two inches per hour across Michiana, and the winds gusted anywhere from 35 to 45 miles per hour. Visibilities dropped to near zero as well, basically creating whiteout conditions for several hours. The heavy snow and wind lasted for nearly two days, ending late in the day on January 27th. And after it all, as much as 30 inches of snow fell across Michiana, the heaviest amounts to the north of Benton Harbor. And the gray blizzard of 1978 was part of the, one of the coldest and snowiest winters in South Bend. The average temperature that winter season was only 19.9 degrees, with a snowfall total of 136.3 inches by spring. Unfortunately, in the end, a total of 51 people lost their lives as a result of this historic storm. When it's windy on a cold day, the wind blowing on your skin can make the temperature feel even colder. The temperature that it feels like is called the wind chill. Our ABC 57 First Warning Neighborhood Weather Team uses this simple chart to find the wind chill temperature. You take the temperature that it is outside and the wind speed and follow them down the line, and that's the wind chill. When the wind chill is in the negatives, you have a higher risk of frostbite or hypothermia without the right clothing. When the cold winter months arrive, you want to make sure you know how to dress warm for the elements. When it's chilly outside, temperatures are typically in the 40s, so you'll want to make sure that you have the appropriate clothing on. Typically, one to two layers, a light jacket, long pants, and warm boots. And when temperatures fall below 32 degrees, you want to be sure to add an extra layer on underneath your winter coat, as well as another layer of pants. And don't forget the gloves, as well as the hat. And switch out your warm shoes for warm boots. When temperatures fall near zero degrees and there's a negative wind chill value, you have a higher risk of developing frostbite and hypothermia. Hypothermia is when your body temperature drops to a dangerously cold level, and this can be life-threatening. Frostbite occurs when your fingers, your toes, your ears, nose, and chin start to freeze. You'll know when this happens if they become numb or start to hurt. This means that you need to put on warmer clothing like thick waterproof gloves, a thick hat, multiple layers including a warm winter coat, a scarf, snow pants, and thick winter boots. How much did it snow? That's the question everyone wants to know and you can help answer that question by knowing how to measure snow properly. All you need is a ruler or a tape measure and an open location that's designated that you'll measure the snow from every time. Here at ABC 57 News, we have our snow stick where we watch snow accumulate and then we measure. On this special scientific ruler, we measure the closest tenth of an inch. On a standard measuring tape or ruler, try to measure to the closest half or quarter inch. Write down your measurement and even snap a photo and share it with ABC 57 News. We use these reports in our forecast and share it with others to help them plan around the weather. Finally, make sure you clean off your snow spot so it's ready to measure another fresh snowfall. Winter is coming and we'll keep you prepared. Project Blizzard is a special presentation of the ABC 57 First Warning Neighborhood Weather Team.